What's good, y'all? It's Alex Kamunia here, and I'm back with another video. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to manage your money like the wealthy, right? We're gonna talk about uh, allocating your money between your investments, your savings, and your retirement. Let's get into today's video. Now, a question I always get asked is how much of my income uh, should I be allocating towards, you know, every one of these categories, right? My savings, my investments, in my retirement, right? Should I be putting 10%? Should I be putting 5%? Should I be putting 30%? And every time I respond the same way, it just depends, right? The answer nobody likes to hear. Everybody wants a straightforward, monolithic, dry cut answer. But in fact, there's no monolithic, dry cut answer when it comes to this kind of stuff, right? Because it depends on the person. The number one question that you need to ask yourself and be able to answer whenever you're trying to determine what your allocation should be is what is your retirement goal is your goal to achieve financial freedom and retire early like in five or ten years or is your goal to be in nine to five slavery and retire when you're 60 65 70 years old neither is necessarily right or wrong uh, i mean personally i think financial freedom is the right way i mean i don't know why anyone would want to work for 40 years and then you know retire and live off of you know some money that may or may not be there but then again that's your prerogative so i'm going to talk about that as well in this video but i really want to stress and emphasize the point that i cannot give monolithic generic advice when it comes to this right because what i'm doing is going to be different than what you're doing or what the next person is doing so that means that any percentage that i told you wouldn't really matter because it might not be applicable for your particular situation right like i always said my goal is to be retired by age 28. so my investment strategy my allocation strategy is going to be different from someone that's my age 24 years old but wants to retire when they're you know 60 or 70 years old it's gonna be a whole different we're playing two different money games but i want to revisit the allocation for investments later on in this video right now i want to talk about just general budgeting and how i think people should be approaching budgeting in order to be you know making sure that they're moving towards whatever their retirement goal is so what i've noticed is that most people are actually really drifting whenever they approach budgeting and personal finance in general so what is drifting? It's pretty much whenever, you know, you're just letting things happen to you as opposed to you intentionally making things happen. So in regards to personal finance and budgeting, most people are drifting because they don't necessarily, you know, have a definiteness of purpose with their budgeting, right? They don't, they're just, they say they're budgeting, but they're not really doing it for any reason. They're just you know, letting whatever happens, happens, and they classify that as budgeting. So there's ne there's not really anything that they're working towards, right? And so for most people, most people allow their finances to control them as opposed to them controlling their finances. And so this is why you usually hear, you know, when people have, you know, extra money, I I'm sure y'all have heard it, it's probably happened to you because it's happened to me, you know, you get some extra money or you have any extra money, and then, you know, a few weeks later, you check in your statement or your bank account. You're like, dang, what happened to that extra money? And you generally don't even know what happened to that money. It literally just got lost. It's kind of like Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law is essentially, you know, the principle that things will always expand to fill up the allotted space. Right. So, you know, y'all remember like back in like high school or college, you know, you might have been given an assignment and you might have been given two, three, four weeks to complete the assignment. And a lot of people, you know, <laughs> most people, they you know, don't even start it until a few days before. Or if you did start it early, you were just, you know, you would not complete it early because you know, oh, I had so much time, you're gonna allow it to take up that entire, you know, time for you to actually complete that assignment as opposed to just getting it done, right? And this is what happens with, you know, money and personal finance and budgeting. It's like, you get any money, you're going to find a way to spend this money somehow, some way. If you don't have a purpose for it, you're gonna find a way to spend it and it will get lost and wasted. That's the worst thing that can happen. And this is why you often see in real life that you know if you aren't intentionally trying to get wealthy, you will accidentally end up poor. So you need to have a plan for your money as soon as it comes in. Find out how can we get rid of this money and where does it need to go? If you plan to retire in you know five, 10 years and achieve that uh, financial freedom, then obviously a majority of your money has to be going into investing into assets that are gonna pay you income, right? Real estate, stock paying dividends, your business, something that's going to generate income for you that you're going to be able to live off. That's financial freedom. Now, if your goal is that nine to five slavery for the next you know, 40 years or really the rest of your life, 
then obviously a majority of your money uh, is going to be going into these retirement accounts like a 401k or you know some sort of employee sponsored retirement account people always look at me crazy when i say i don't contribute to my 401k but this is why i say that financial advice cannot be monolithic there's no advice that is applicable to everyone right personal finance is called personal for a reason i tell everyone i mean y'all know i tell everyone i talk about it all the time my goal is to retire by age 28 and have financial freedom by age 28 right how the hell does a 401k account help me accomplish that contributing money to an account that i can't even touch until i'm 59 and a half years old without paying a penalty that's stupid use your common sense me putting money in there would essentially be me saying i'm okay with not retiring until i'm 60 years old i need that money to invest in assets that are going to pay me income and these same people that look at me crazy or say that i'm crazy for not contributing to a 401k let's just wait 40 years and see who's actually better off me investing into assets such as real estate that are going to be worth hundreds of millions of dollars by the time i'm you know 60 70 years old and me investing into my business that's going to be paying me seven figures per month by the time i'm 67 years old or you contributing to your 401k that you hope to be there when you are 67 years old 99 percent of people will not retire by age 28 so that being said I cannot do what 99% of people are doing. And like I said, this won't be applicable to everyone. If you know that you're gonna be working for the next 40, 50, 60 years, then that is not the best thing for you. But if you know that you want to be retired early and you want to achieve financial freedom at an early age, what sense does it make to contribute money into a retirement account in which you can't touch the money for 40 years? Right? I'm better off putting that money into the stock market and at least then I'm able to uh, leverage it, access it to leverage it so that I can uh, use it to buy more assets and acquire more assets that will pay me more income. But look, overall, the point I'm making is that whatever you do, you need to have a plan for that money, regardless of if you want to be a nine to five slavery forever or if you want to achieve financial freedom, you need to have a plan for that money as soon as it comes in. If you plan to put money into a retirement account, you need to be contributing the maximum possible that you can pos that your lifestyle can afford you. If you want financial freedom, you need to be contributing the maximum possible so that you can acquire assets on a timeline that's going to work for your financial freedom, right? Whenever I set the goal for financial freedom and we started on this journey back in January of 2018, we just graduated from college, we started on this journey, we were putting away 700 to $1,000 every single paycheck because it was all to buy that first property so we ended up saving you know over twelve thousand dollars in about six months to buy that first property so ultimately what i'm getting to is that as soon as money comes in you need to be paying yourself first right putting that money towards your uh future pay yourself first and then you pay your bills on what's left i talked about it in the zero sum budgeting method right that's ultimately what this boils down to pay yourself first and then you pay your bills after what's left. You have to learn how to operate your life on the remainder as opposed to trying to, you know, pay all your bills and then uh, contributing to your future last. Put yourself first. Prioritize yourself. This is what the wealthy are doing. <laughs> the wealthy get paid and they use that money to go buy more assets and investments, right? And then they let those assets and those things buy the liabilities. You don't buy the liabilities first and then go buy assets. You don't have nothing left to buy assets with. So go buy the assets first, let the assets buy you liabilities. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope y'all gained something of value from it. If you did, I'd appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm so that they know that this is good content that needs to get pushed out some more. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos, so I'd really, really appreciate them. Anyways, I will see y'all in the next one.